Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. Black holes, we hear about them all the time, but AGN perhaps less so. In this week's video we're going to dive a little bit deeper on AGN. What exactly are they and how are they different to black holes? So let's begin. By now, we should all be familiar with the term black hole, a region of space-time where the gravity is so strong that not even light can escape its horizon. We believe that a black hole exists at the centre of every galaxy, and there are hundreds of billions of galaxies in our observable universe alone. Specifically, a black hole residing at the centre of a galaxy is known as a supermassive black hole, the largest type of black hole, with its mass being millions to billions of times the mass of our Sun. But we believe that many more smaller black holes exist scattered throughout our universe. We believe in our galaxy alone there could be up to 1 billion stellar mass black holes. Now active galactic nuclei, or AGN for short, is as the name suggests, the active region at the centre of a galaxy. So in other words, a supermassive black hole. But more importantly, an active one. They are actively feeding on the material around them. The term AGN is something that I often use interchangeably with the word black hole, because despite black holes being so abundant throughout our universe, we have only seen directly two of them. The supermassive black hole at the centre of the giant elliptical galaxy, Messier 87, and the one at the heart of the Milky Way, which were imaged within the last few years. Less than 20 stellar mass black holes have ever been identified, but these are only inferred to exist through the dynamics of binary companion stars. To do this, they measure the velocity of the companion star to infer the gravitational potential of the system, and then this can indicate whether an invisible object, a black hole, is there. On the contrary, 40% of galaxies are known to host AGN, and we can observe them over many wavelengths, X-rays, radio, optical, and infrared. So typically, when you meet an astronomer who says that they work on black holes, it's actually more likely that they actually work on AGN. But an AGN is not just a black hole. When we call the edge of a black hole the event horizon, this is where no light can escape from the black hole. We're taught that the gravity of a black hole is so strong that not even light can escape it. Outside of this horizon, massive black holes are surrounded by a donut-shaped gas cloud known as a torus. When a black hole feeds, the material that is being gravitationally pulled by the black hole's immense gravity will have some small net rotation. And due to the conservation of angular momentum, it cannot simply fall directly onto the black hole along a straight line, but instead it gets squished into a disk that we call an accretion disk. As the black hole sucks in the surrounding material, it propels superfast jets of material travelling out of the poles of the disk at almost the speed of light. These produce bright lobes of radio emission and cavities in x-rays, but additionally material spiralling onto the black hole can gain superfast speeds and be ejected onto the surrounding area of the accretion disk. These black hole winds can be so powerful that they can halt star formation and have a huge impact on their host galaxies. All of these things are observable, the jets, the winds, the emission, and that's why we can easily observe AGN, but not your standard black hole. The most powerful AGN are known as quasars. These are super luminous. In fact, the first observation of an AGN was by Martin Schmidt in 1963 of the radio source 3C273 who thought that the object was a peculiar star and thus he termed the object a quasi-stellar object, or quasar for short. Depending on the direction that you view an AGN, you might also hear different names. Blazars are essentially quasars viewed directly along the jet, and this means that they're even more luminous than quasars are. They're typically seen from 45 degrees from the jet. 
The latter are much more common in the universe, and you also get safer two galaxies that are essentially AGN observed along the dusty torus. So there you have it, AGN are black holes, but not just the black holes themselves, they also encompass the active regions around a black hole, and can also be further categorized into blazars, quasars, CFER2 galaxies. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.